Yep. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, we have a pretty light agenda today. Um, first of all, Alex, I don't know if Alex is here today, but he sent apologies. He has uh, been very, very busy in the past couple of weeks and hasn't made uh, any progress on the document yet, but he has every intention of doing so before the next meeting. Um, we have a presentation scheduled for day, today from Kieran from OpenEBS. Uh, so, so if you'd like There we go. Hey, Quentin, can you see my screen? Yes, I, yes, I can. Thank you. I assume everyone else can too. So when you're ready, take it away. Cool. Uh, so th this is going to be a quick one. I, I, um, so the background of this is um, uh, we discussed about um, this component called Node Disk Manager for a project uh, in the Kubernetes face-to-face -face storage meeting that happened uh, last week. And um, Clint suggested that, you know, maybe it's better to present it to a wider audience. Uh, so I'll just quickly walk through this one. Uh, the intent is um, to kind of share what we are doing here and then also get some feedback and uh, uh, inputs in terms of collaborations or ideas uh, for this open source project. All right. Uh, uh, just a bit of a background about me. I work for Maya Data. Uh, I work on the OpenEBS project. Uh, OpenEBS project was one of the projects that we presented in the CNC of storage work group back in February. Uh, so one of the offshoots of OpenEBS uh, project was there were several storage related uh, uh, problems that are pretty common uh, uh, for storage solutions. Um, so we're trying to handle this as uh, multiple projects. Uh, so some of them are like Notice Manager is one of the project. Uh, Litmus is another uh, E2E testing project uh, that's coming up. And then uh, we host user, which is about how do we create containers that use SPDK to directly access disks, right? Uh, so today I'll primarily be talking about the Notice Manager. Uh, so the little bit of a background is uh, we have uh, primarily three types of uh, persistent volumes that we can create in Kubernetes today. One is uh, the network attached mode, uh, which is primarily uh, you know either an uh, external SAN, NAS, or cloud disks. The actual storage is outside of the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, but then there are like two other uh, modes that are coming up. One is a direct attached storage. This is where a lot of work is going on with the local PVs. And the other one is hyper-converged uh, solutions uh, like uh, OpenEPS or uh, ClusterFS or uh, Rook, uh, all these orchestrate storage engines that run within Kubernetes clusters. Right? Uh, so the common thing about uh, the uh, DAS or uh, CAS is uh, we need some kind of a mechanism to manage the disks that are attached to the Kubernetes clusters uh, so that um, uh, some kind of a high level operators can be written uh, to create local PVs or in uh, the case of uh, container attached storage solutions, it's about uh, uh, providing these disks, different types of disks to a CAS pod so that they can uh, provide some storage controller functionality and uh, the volumes can be shared by different applications. In local PV, uh, typically you kind of go from a uh, application to one of the disks, right? Okay, so one regular pattern or like, you know, one uh, uh, common implementation pattern that we see is each of these KTS nodes can be uh, linked with local disks or this could be coming from external targets like iSCSI or FC or uh, uh, it could be cloud like GPD or EBS. Uh, so all these disks will be taken and a concept called pool will be created. And using this pool, um, multiple uh, PVs can be created for applications. The, uh, Tools can be of, uh, it could be as simple as uh, creating a ext4 or a LVM based host directory, um, or it could be uh, portworks volumes or cluster pool 
uh, volumes are self right right uh, what are some of the common challenges or uh, um, uh, disk related things that we need to handle or these cas pods are typically uh, long running and they are on the critical io path so it's not uh, uh, advisable to kind of restart them uh, very frequently uh, and how do we handle the cases of uh, disk failures right uh, so if a uh, disk fails then we should be able to uh, uh, get notifications so that we can replace that with some other spare disks or take some corrective actions before the actual disk go bad right um, so the motivation for doing this uh, so though it started off as a uh, sub project of open ebs it kind of started making sense to do it in a generic way so that multiple projects can use. Uh, so one of the uh, places where this can be used is uh, local PVs, uh, right? Uh, so local PVs today is about uh, uh, statically provisioned uh, PVs that can be used by apps. And there are there is a need for some high level operators to be written, uh, which I think in the last KubeCon we uh, uh, heard from Ian and uh, Michelle about uh, the node prep uh, kind of a containers that have to be launched that will actually discover the disks, do some kind of a cleanup work or uh, formatting work, and then uh, provide it to the local PVs. Uh, so these kind of operations can be generally done by the disk manager. Uh, and then additional things like you know how do we monitor the usage or like you know, errors? How do we handle the cases of dynamically uh, detecting the disk attached, detached kind of situations, and then um, notifying the operators to take corrective actions. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, while it complements the PV, then they, um, within Kubernetes, there are uh, as at, when you're operating that at scale, uh, you, you would need some kind of uh, storage operation operators that you will uh, eventually develop uh, to manage uh, the failed disks or the failing disks. Uh, this is for that purpose and also how do we kind of uh, uh, say the disks move from one node that node is uh, gone into a state where it cannot be recovered so that uh, especially if it's a hard disk or if it's uh, a externally attached disk you can kind of detach it from that node and attach to some other node or do you detect that okay it's actually a disk that was used to store some data now i can recover it from a different node and use it for a local PV, that kind of operators can be built. Um, all this can be done if the disk information is available with some unique identifiers and some kind of attributes. Uh, so this node disk manager proposes a design and uh, this is actually a prototype that we're building that can show how we can use Kubernetes uh, custom resources to uh, maintain a disk inventory with a lot of attributes uh, uh, in a uniform way that the storage operators can use to build their functionalities. Right. Um, so for CAS though, this uh, uh, becomes even more necessary because local PVs or persistent volumes itself cannot be used uh, uh, since you cannot dynamically attach, detach uh, disks and uh, most often CAS will have that requirement of making sure there are multiple disks attached to that and you should replace a failed disk with a new disk, that kind of stuff, right? And also ability to uh, predict failures before they happen so that some kind of a migration workflow can be taken or let's say for performance reasons, you want to uh, pull together different types of disks to uh, kind of better utilize the cache or uh, the expensive resources that are available. Okay. Any high level questions so far, and, or I can probably just get into the next. I have like just a couple of more slides. Yeah, I, I had one or two questions. Um, one is, uh, there seems to be a blurry line here between file systems and block stores. I noticed in your um, uh, volume types, you, you had both file system types and block store types. So ZFE and EXT4, uh, for example, are file systems, but EBS and LBM are block stores. Right. Uh, do um, you so the blocks are really the disks that are coming from the... That's correct. Um, 
So the underlying disks that come are usually blocks, but on top of that, you can create uh, pools that could be either a file-based or a block-based pools. Sorry, you broke up a bit. I'm not, I'm not sure if the problems on my end or your end, but um, so, so did, did you explain how, do, do we, do we deal with block stores and file stores as if they're the same thing or do we make a distinction between them? Cool. Uh, I just paused the sharing so that um, maybe it's the internet on my end that's causing the problem. Can you hear me okay now? Uh, I, I've been struggling to hear you, but I don't know if it's just my problem. Maybe do a sound check now that you've uh, stopped your sharing. Hi, uh, Quinton, I just stopped the sharing. Maybe it's the problem with the bandwidth. Yeah, it was working fine earlier on the call. It just became problematic in the last minute or two. Okay, let's continue. I guess you'll have to reshare. Hello? Uh, we can hear you fine, Karen. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so just to answer that question, I think uh, Quinton was asking whether um, uh, we are using both file and uh, block-based uh, file systems. Um, that's correct, Quinton. Uh, though the node disk manager manages the block disks from the underlying uh, storage of the southbound, on the northbound, Karen, are you uh, still there? Yeah, I couldn't hear him either, but I can hear you fine now, Saad. Yeah, maybe he uh, dropped off, I'm not sure. Let's give him a few minutes. Uh, I think Zoom is pretty good at reconnecting automatically, actually. OK. Maybe to uh, use the time wisely in the meantime, Saad, I think you're pretty familiar with uh, with some of this stuff at least. Um, could you give us an answer to the previous question about whether there's a hard or no distinction between file systems and block stores in the volume interfaces? 
Um, so today, there is a way to expose both block and file in the Kubernetes volume subsystem. Um, you have a way to request it in the persistent volume claim object to say whether you want block or file. Uh, and then under the covers, uh, the plugin can, can decide how it wants to implement either of those. Uh, and then you also have the ability to implement file on block uh, implicitly if you're a block and you want to support file as well. Um, in the future, we're considering making file on block uh, a first class field in, uh, or first class um, uh, within the Kubernetes API. Uh, this will help us with secure containers. Uh, but that's, that's basically uh, it. Okay, thanks. So, so, so I guess in summary, it's, it's a sort of a blurry line there. They're both volume claims and they're both volumes, but you get a subtype file or block. Yep. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thanks, Art. Um, sorry, my connection is bad and it keeps going. I, it's probably because I'm trying to uh, share the screen as well. One more comment on that. There's also a mode. Hear me? I, I was saying specifically. Your sounds very bad, Basim, or at least for me. Can you speak close to the mic? Yeah, I don't think he was talking to us. Maybe just joined and uh, mic enabled. Oh, okay. Uh, carry on, Kieran. Yes, Looks like we might have lost Kieran. <laughs> I shared the uh, Google presentation on the chat window. Uh, if someone could just help me. Um, present that, uh, looks like my bandwidth problem is when I share it and then talk at the same time. Uh, I tried to share it, but I, I don't have permission to the doc. If you can give me a view. I just sent you a request for that. Doing that right now. Oh, there we go. Someone's sharing it for you. Just while he's bringing that up, <coughs> Mr. George Erickson, I was a bit concerned about equating file system and volume. I would equate maybe the storage of a file with a volume, but not a file system, which is a namespace. <coughs> Uh, George, um, I don't think I fully understood the question. Um, so the um, maybe like I can reach out to you offline and then understand that uh, question, or if somebody else understands the question from the Kubernetes perspective. Yeah, maybe a question of terminology, and we can deal with it offline. That's fine. Okay. Cool. Uh, so the next slide, if you can get the right one. Thanks for sharing. Uh, all right, next one. And the next one. One more, please. 
this is the last one okay uh, so the, the way this uh, notice manager is going to work is it's going to be a daemon set that's running on uh, the storage nodes in the kubernetes it's going to use uh, different discovery mechanisms uh, to uh, identify the block disks that are attached to a node and then it's going to put them into the uh, kubernetes um, as the custom resources right uh, i have an example of how the custom resource looks in the next slide but using those custom resources the storage control plane operators like let's say the local pv or open ebs or cluster refs can use them to uh, create objects that they need for example it could be like a local persistent volume or in case of uh, open ebs we could be creating a, uh, a storage pool pod and similarly a cluster refs uh, cluster daemon or um, uh, the cluster daemon set can use these disk resources resources to identify which uh, nodes should have the uh, pool created right um, there's also a monitoring piece that's getting built into node disk manager that can monitor this uh, disks uh, uh, for errors as well as uh, uh, the metrics in terms of iops latency throughput etc that will be exposed to prometheus that can be actually configured to be exported to prometheus or there could be some alert set up or some events that can be uh, sent to the storage control plane uh, so that they can handle that uh, appropriately right so some of the events that uh, uh, we have prototyped is um, using utep to kind of get the attached detach events for the disks and then um, adding those resources and also detect some kind of a disk errors and then convert that into events and send it up right uh, so one of the future items for a notice manager is also to be able to uh, take something called as a, called as a disk claim uh, so that it can provision the disks on the external storage provisioners uh, for example uh, on an san or uh, uh, cloud next slide please okay uh, so this just explains uh, some of the objects that i uh, explained earlier uh, in the interest of time let's just go to the next one okay so this is a example disk resource object that will be created it's a custom resource um, it will have information of the topology of the disk here um, i've just taken from the kubernetes uh, gke cluster so it just shows the host name from which it's available what's the path and the capacity and then uh, some details that we kind of got from lsplk but there are um, uh, additional information that we can get uh, in if it's a block disk or if it's a ssd or if it's nvme connected uh, or um, if you want to get to the uh, topology at the cpu level uh, those things can be obtained from this one so i'll stop here uh, i think the main intention was uh, to kind of uh, say that um, uh, we have this project going on and uh, we have um, uh, open ebs and then um, also uh, humble I, i think he's also on the call from red hat looking at how to use this for uh, writing the um, using this with the cluster fs and open ebs um, we are really looking for contributions in terms of uh, design ideas and then um, maybe take it forward to see how to make it generic so that we can build some high level storage operators using this Thanks very much Kiran that was very useful. Um are you in a point where you want to open up for questions? Uh, yes, good. I think now is a good time to take questions. Also one thing uh, uh, I have one but want, I don't want to Yeah, one one other thing I wanted to still look at I haven't um, I need to get in touch with Warman if is on the call to see how uh, what they are doing uh, in Rue uh, there is a similar functionality there um, to see how that kind of relates to this and if there is any collaboration that's possible with this one sorry quilton go ahead i was just saying i i have a question but i also am conscious of dominating conversation so uh, let me step back and find out if anyone else has anything they would like to talk about or ask questions specifically about the presentation
Okay, if not, if not, I'll ask my question. Um, so it was around uh, storage networks. So most of the public cloud providers don't really have the distinction that I'm aware of uh, between multiple networks, whereas in uh, enterprise data centers, it's not uncommon to have multiple storage networks attached, uh, well, certainly within the data center and possibly also attached to a particular node. Uh, um, if anyone or if you have given much thought to the concept of storage networks and how do you distinguish between them and how do you advertise it, you know, it's not, not again, not uncommon volume to be advertised on multiple networks and sometimes have different performance characteristics, etc. Uh, have you given any thought to that? I haven't included that in the uh, uh, current list of it. You know, the design, but that's a good one, Quinton. I, I think it can, it easily ties into the uh, things that Notice Manager can provide in terms of topology, uh, uh, so that net storage networks can be treated as a topology item that can tie in uh, to the operators. Uh, yeah, I'll add that as one of the items here. Thanks. And I see one question from um, uh, on the chat about uh, how how do we determine the uh, types of the disks. Um, uh, so we currently do it using the uh, type that is exposed uh, using the attributes, uh, using LSBLK and using the uh, database society attributes that I get. Uh, but there's also plan to use the benchmarking to kind of uh, set up uh, the types. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I guess one could distinguish between, um, you know, at provisioning time performance, um, so, so some kind of static snapshot of performance taken at some point in time, um, versus uh, performance over time. So you can imagine when storage networks or the general network perhaps get congested or the uh, device that the storage volume is stored on gets overloaded, uh, the performance might vary over time. Yes. Um, which and which of those of, two are you considering? Uh, so the one that's already considered is the runtime uh, performance benchmarking that we collect and then push it via alerts or into Prometheus. Um, the one, the static uh, benchmarking is not yet done. Uh, the, we basically use some kind of a map to say which type of the disk it is. But we plan to do the static benchmarking as well before assigning it to a persistent volume or a pool. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, just to get back to my previous question, uh, uh, is there anyone on, on the call who can comment on whether or not they have any strong requirements for um, even exposing the concept of a storage network to start with? And then secondly, multiple storage networks in a data center or per node. Is that a, I've seen the requirement some number of times, but I'm not sure how general the requirement is. So curious if anyone else has uh, experience around that point. Uh, so Quinta, I, I mean, we, I've seen this requirement um, uh, when we are setting up the private data centers and then cloud, uh, I've not, worked on the Kubernetes cluster with this requirement, but uh, non-Kubernetes cluster, definitely this was a requirement. Okay, good. Uh, what is it that you're trying to manage when you talk about the storage network? Are you, are you trying to manage the fiber channel or NDME or whatever aspects of the network or, or is it simply just connectivity between storage and clients? Well, the question that I was, so, so the, the use cases that I've seen in the past are one, uh, you may have multiple storage networks, uh, as you say, the kinds of mentioned, and some of them are connected to all the nodes and some of them are only connected to some of the nodes. Um, and so having, if a given node is connected to a given node, storage network and a volume is, is exposed on that network, then, then you can schedule a pod that needs the, that volume onto that node, uh, but not onto all nodes. Um, and then similarly, there are different performance characteristics and perhaps even 
uh, permissions. So you might have a storage network that's limited to you know certain tasks or certain users, and then you may have a lower, maybe even on the on the general LAN where you can access the same storage but across a different lower performing network. Um, so those are the kinds of use cases I've seen in the past. Yep. Those should all exist. And those are, those are more about discovering the topology of the network connectivity. Yeah, exactly. And it sounds like we don't have that at the moment. So it uh, wouldn't be possible for the scheduler to figure out whether it was contactable or not. <clears throat> Hey, hey, Quentin, I, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can. So there's one of the problems is uh, multi-homing networks on a container is still not supported in Kubernetes. Um, I've seen people do this, and we've looked at this for rook scenarios through a special CNI plugin that enables you to switch between between networks. Um, so there's there's a body of work. I'll, I'll try to I'll I'll post an email on the working group with with some details. But uh, that that's one area that I think need you know we need to think through how a container can choose which path it goes out or uses uh, when when you know wanting to use the network. Yes, I'm, I'm well aware of the fact that, that we don't provide multiple networks per pod at the moment. Uh, it's quite problematic in some application areas, uh, specifically building you know, net network infrastructure like firewall uh, and also telco applications which have multiple you know, control network and data plane network, et cetera. Um, right. There's a, there is one CNI plugin that I think the folks at Intel started um, that does multiplexing, uh, but it's it's, I'd say it's early work. Yeah, yeah, we also have, we have a thing called CNI Genie, I think, which does something similar. Um, uh, I, I guess a pertinent question in this space is, is, do we want to treat storage networks as generic networks and sort of leave it up to CNI and the networking SIG and these kind of people uh, to to solve that, or do we think that a storage network, uh, a SAN basically, or NAS, is um, is a special enough thing and distinct from general networks that want to have for those and solve that in a separate storage centric way? So I'd suggest that there's two levels to that answer. At one level, you're discovering the network connectivity between essentially ports on one side with ports on the other side and, <clears throat> and switches in the middle. Um, at the second level, you want to know what's underneath the ports. So you want to be able to, to go through a port, you know, as you and say, okay, what can I see? and the discovery there. Sorry, you, you broke up a bit there, George. Uh, I, think, I think my question was a different one. Do, do we want to treat storage networks as distinct from data networks? Or do we want to treat them as a converged thing? Um, it seems to me like there are arguments in both directions. I mean, in many cases, general purpose TCP networks are used to attach to storage, public clouds work, for example. <clears throat> um, but there are other cases where you have completely physically separate and, and the protocols that run over them are completely different. Uh, and those are you know, unlikely to be solved by the networking SIG unless we go and push on them to solve that. Um, I, I would imagine it would be difficult in practice to, to solve the two problems separately because there's such a big overlap, um, but we should just be aware of that. If, if there is a strong requirement to support SANS, uh, and in particular multiple SANS per node or per data center or you know, per cluster, 
um, we need to probably engage closely with with this networking people to make sure that gets solved. Otherwise, it's likely not to be. Yes. As I was saying, the topology between endpoints it certainly needs to be covered by the networking guys, but more broadly, it's also the same problem if you're talking about an IPMI network as an Ethernet network or you know, variants of that or a fiber channel network. Yeah. Um, what so I was saying is there's the second level. Okay, any other questions? For Oh. Sorry, I've got a very bad audio connection. I keep talking over you, George. My apologies. That's okay. What I said before was that there's a second level to that problem. <clears throat> Once you can get to an endpoint on, on some target, then there's a need to do discovery underneath that target. What file systems or volumes or this or whatever you can see there. Yeah, indeed. And, and one could argue both ways, whether that belongs within a general purpose platform like Kubernetes or all the kinds of things CNCF provides, or whether that is more uh, proprietary, whether whether each storage uh, provider might have different interfaces for those discoveries and things, and maybe we push that outside of the standard definition. Um, yeah, I, I don't know an answer to that, but yes, I, I agree that that has to happen somewhere. Uh, it's not clear that applications need to do that. It seems more like the job of a storage controller of some sort. Okay, any more questions for Kieran? Quentin, I would like to just add one more last comment. Uh, so one of the things that uh, we wanted to do with the node disk manager is uh, form a, uh, a separate uh, group that meets bi-weekly to kind of make progress on that one. So if anybody from this group is interested in joining that, uh, please ping me or comment on the slides. I'll just open that up for comments and then uh, we'll take it from there. Thank you, everyone, for uh, your time. Thanks, Kiran. Exciting project. <clears throat> uh, that's all we have on the agenda for this week. Uh, does anyone else have anything they want to discuss while we're all here? Otherwise, we can just wrap up. Going twice. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you again in two weeks. <clears throat>